Okay, guys. Things are getting crazy on Wall Street. You have a parabolic move here today in the dollar. The bonds are going absolutely wild today because of the UK's inflation report that came out today. But you also have great earnings out of Netflix. Really, you couldn't have asked for anything much better than what we got out of Netflix. So let's talk about exactly what's going on today, what's pushing and pulling on the markets to try to make a little bit of sense of this move that we are seeing today. So guys, let's get straight into it. The dollar, when it goes up, is bad for the markets. That's really the Econ 101 version you need to know. There's a lot of implications, right, for foreign currency conversions with global companies based in America, how that fundamentally affects businesses, it's very negative. To take in foreign currencies and convert that to a stronger dollar, it means you're going to get less dollars back on that conversion. That's really the fast um, explanation of this. But days like today, where the dollar is up 0.80%, is saying the Fed is going to have to tighten a lot more. So people go out, they buy the dollar because if the Fed's tightening, whereas you have the UK that's easing economic policy. Japan, potentially by the end of the month, month easing economic uh, uh, conditions, potentially. You have Russia, which is in its own shit show situation. The rest of Europe in a shit show. Where else do you really have China easing economic conditions? South America, you don't even want to invest your money over there. Africa, you don't even want to invest your money over there. Australia, yes, they are tightening, but they've even told the Fed that they should stop tightening as aggressively. So th there's not really any other options for currency investors besides the dollar as of right now. And the reason, like I said, why the dollar is up so much is because people are expecting the Fed to tighten a lot more aggressively. And that is because the UK inflation just broke above a new 40-year high as the Brits battle cost of living crisis. And the key points say UK inflation rose in the year to September 2022 as the country's cost of living crisis continues to hammer households and businesses ahead of a tough winter. Inflation unexpectedly dipped to 9.9% in August, down from 10.1% in July on the back of a fuel price decline and Reuters estimated an increase of 10% for September. The consumer price index rose 10.1% in September. So that's a big reason why the dollar is up so much. But again, it's causing the bond yields to absolutely go crazy. And it says right here, the main headline under the bond section of CNBC says treasury yields climb as recession fears spread. And that's why you're seeing the U.S. 10-year yield at uh, 4.13%. We are up 13 basis points alone here today, which is a very parabolic move for a 10-year treasury bond. To really be over 4% is unprecedented. Over the, over the last 10 to 20 years now, we haven't been above 4% on the 10 year bond and what that does if if you guys are unaware it, it really makes bond investing a little bit more favorable right if people think that hey inflation is not going to be four percent for the next 10 years if we believe the fed is going to go down to two percent by 2025 or three percent well you're going to make money on this bond pretty much at this point you're going to make money on this bond so investors they push and pull between bond markets and stock markets that's why during the last couple of years Really, ever since uh, COVID, when bond yields were half a percent, well, you're not getting a yield in bonds. You're losing money. Sure, you're going to get that guaranteed return, that, that guaranteed safety, but inflation, even at 1% or 2%, you're going to lose money, right? But... That's why the stock market rallied, because if you're not going to put money in bonds, you're going to put money in stocks. Now it's the opposite. If you are not going to put money in stocks because there's all these fears, recessions, uh, global conflicts, so on and so forth. I think you guys get the drift there. Well, you're going to put your money in bonds. So it's this big push and pull battle between the markets, the stock market, and the bond market. All of this really revolves around economic data day by day. You know, things can really change. But what you're seeing today is definitely a rush to safety. People are a little bit more fearful. And this is actually surprising to some degree because Netflix earnings were great. 
I mean, it, we expected them to add 1 million new paid members. They added 2.4 million paid members. That was an over 100% beat. I mean, you really can't expect anything better and it says the company expects to add another 4.5 million subscribers in the december quarter the stock was up 13 percent in pre-market trading so literally they beat on the top the bottom line the subscriber growth they beat on guidance they beat on everything and that's why netflix is up today like i said around 13 percent and that's all great it shows companies for to some degree can still weather some of the inflation that we're seeing that the consumer is still buying products and services but when you get data like this today when you get bond moves like this when you get the dollar moving up like this it's very hard for stocks to react positively and even though you know we got all of this bad news today which really outweighs netflix earnings or any of the smaller uh good news that we did get the s p 500 is only down 0.65 percent so in the grand scope of things the markets are actually holding up very very well considering what's happening with like i said the bad news out of the uk as well as the bond yields that are going absolutely parabolic now at the same time you're seeing something very interesting happening today intraday with s p 500 option so i want to take a look at really this friday's expiration october 21st 2022 and next week because i think that's where you're going to get pretty much most of the s p 500 and the nasdaq that will be reporting earnings and you're kind of going to get that bear market balance or you're going to get that new low really there's there's like no other way to put it you're either going to get a bear market bounce or you're going to get a new low so if you have any positions make sure you are highly convicted of your trades because uh, you're either going to make a lot of money or you're going to get completely washed out over the next two weeks so that's why we want to look at the option activity and for the day you're seeing about 2600 orders that have been placed so far on the s p 500 we're almost halfway through trading today exactly so keep that in mind all of these 2600 orders are worth 225 million dollars get this with a positive order value of 89 percent that's the highest positive order value that we have seen in a very long time but if you take a look at the actual positioning of these options there has been so many puts placed on the option chain even though we're seeing a positive order value of 86 percent yesterday 89 percent today on hundreds of millions of dollars it's still a drop in the bucket compared to all the negative positioning that we have seen over the last couple of days and last couple of weeks so for this friday for the total amount of options on the S&P 500, the open interest on the call side is 35.19%. The puts is at 64.81%. And if we pull up this bubble chart, it looks like a lot of the positioning, at least for this Friday on the call side, is really focused around the 390 to the $400 call. So still implying a very big potential move by the end of this week. Potentially, one would say a short squeeze. Now, on the bubble chart, you can also see the most open interest is, is really held at these uh 360 puts so pretty close to the money that to me says that people even if they're expecting downside they're not expecting a big washout this week they're not expecting the spy to drop to 330 right to break 20 dollars under the low of 2022 they're really only expecting a small move to the downside and you can see the open interest at the 360 strike sitting at 123 thousand for open interest these are contracts that are actively held in people's brokerage accounts so that shows me that yes people are positioning for some downside which we've seen throughout all of 2022 and a lot of this positioning is getting old and dated now because a lot of that open interest has been on the chain for a while but people they're not really expecting a big washout at least for this week now for next week what we see as far as the bubble chart and if you guys are unaware what this actual bubble chart is it's it's just showing you the open interest uh of of where these options are and what strike they are right so for the call side for next week i should start by saying the open interest is only 21.88 percent which is very very low very low bullish positioning and on the put side there's 78.12 percent open interest and if you look at the bubble chart the the highest open interest contract from what i could tell is the 390 call with open interest at about 37 and a half 
thousand and you're seeing volume for the day at about 3500 so far what that is really showing you is people are betting if we do have upside we could have some pretty big upside 390 is pretty far away from where we sit at 368 so that would be what four or five percent upside at least from here on the put side you're seeing a lot of put activity around 355 on the s p 500 that would be a drop of about 13 12 13 dollars from here so it's decently far out the money but it's not that far out the money people are not expecting a major washout even for next week as you do have a lot of bearish positioning overall and that 355 strike has 93,000 for open interest but volume on the day is only 554 contracts so you're seeing a lot of this negative uh sentiment you're seeing a lot of negative positioning but what i will say to you guys is that markets they're they're very quick to get over things right so the uk they had bad inflation terrible inflation data that came out today that's causing bond yields like i said to spike in a very egregious way usually bond yields don't go up 13 basis points in a single day and even you know to see the s p 500 not down three percent is very unusual and that's showing a lot of strength relatively speaking compared to all of the negative things that are happening here in the equity markets today but if we have good earnings out of tesla today and we could see something along the same lines as what happened to netflix yesterday just completely blowing out expectations and getting really good guidance well the markets are probably going to get over that pretty quickly and you might actually see some recession fears at least for the short term die down a little bit and that's really because you know one of the first things that goes during a recession is the auto market people you know they're they don't go out and get new vehicles they completely stop doing that so if tesla does okay they don't even have to do great but if they do okay a lot of investors are going to say the growth trade is still on and the consumer is okay maybe we should stop selling these bonds right because investors they're 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 selling bonds to make the bond yields go up so there is that i think there was a lot of information uh dropped to you guys here in this video just a couple other reports that we are seeing for the day which is definitely not helping things out you can see that uk's suela braverman resigns as interior minister after 43 days and there's a lot of fear involved in this whole uk situation you know people resigning uh, the markets disagreeing with what with what they're doing literally them having to step in and intervene because they were breaking the pension funds they were breaking their bond market so it's safe to say there's a lot of fear in the uk markets which is translating into fear for the global markets now another key point that came out today is that mortgage demand drops to a 25 year low as interest rates climb now the thing about real estate it it works really slow so you're not going to feel the effects of this right away you're not going to look on zillow right now and see all the listings go down 20 percent. it's not how it works but what you will see is that slowly start to happen over time and when you see mortgage demand drop to a 25 year low that means you had more mortgage demand after the mortgage crisis during 08 09 when nobody wanted to buy a house now people really don't want to buy a house so it's not a good sign for what is to come in the real estate market now it says demand for mortgages to buy a home and to refinance fell again as interest rates kept rising mortgage demand hit its lowest level since 1997 according to the mortgage bankers association the number of borrowers who can benefit from refining refinancing is at a record low so like i said guys not a good sign for what is to come in the real estate market and to to just be a matter of fact with you there's literally no way real estate is not going to come down at least 20 percent from now but like i said it's going to take a couple of years so it's a very slow process but it's coming and that's more reaffirmation that it is coming also this thing it's not moving the markets. I, I highly doubt it's moving the markets, but it's very interesting. It says 66% of American workers are worse off financially than a year ago due to inflation, report finds. As the cost of living keeps rising, more Americans are struggling financially. Now, two-thirds of adults say they are worse off than where they were just one year ago, according to a recent report. Nearly one in three workers, including those earning more than 100000 ran out of money before payday. 
not a good sign ladies and gentlemen guys that is gonna do it for this video we covered a lot of things but we're gonna be back at 4 p.m to go over literally everything you guys need to know about amc about the broad markets potentially seeing another short-term rally in the markets yes it, it i bet it feels bad i bet today feels like the bear market bounce is off the table but i reassure you that what the bonds are doing today, what the dollar is doing today, the stock market should be down over 3% today, and you are down just under half a percent, showing a lot of resilience, and if Tesla can follow through for us and pull through, it's going to be off to the races, let's just say that. So that's going to be it. We'll be back, like I said, at four for the technicals, for everything you need to know about AMC, the broad markets. Everything we did not cover in this video will be put out at the video at four o'clock today. So thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already. I very much appreciate all of you guys. You guys have been great. Seriously, thank you guys for being so positive in the comment section. There's only a couple of people every now and again that like to uh, spread FUD or whatnot. We just don't like to pay attention to them here too much in the comment section. I also see that too. You guys are a lot less argumentative towards each other in the comment section, which I very much appreciate that. If you guys do want to trade with me live in real time every time I make a trade, link down below in the description of this video to join the Patreon. You will get instructions on how to join the actual community over there if you would like to. And if you'd like to get yourself free stocks with Weibo, Moomoo, and Public, links down below in the description as well for those thank you guys for watching thank you guys for everything i will see you in the next one